The Bedridden Bunny by me, Josh Dragon. Jack was sitting on the park bench. He was really unhappy. What's up? asked Silver. Nothing. You can tell us, comforted Reynolds. Friends and family always have your back. Family is the reason I'm sad, explained the bunny. I have so many family members, and sometimes I feel like I don't matter. That's not true, said Reynolds. Of course you matter. Do I really, asked Jack. Just yesterday, I asked Papa to take me to the arcade. I want it to only go with him, but he insisted it be a family thing. Guess how many times that happened, he finished. A lot, guessed Silver. The bunny nodded. Reynolds patted Jack's shoulder. That must be hard, he said. That's the word, replied the bunny. No one knows better than me how it feels to have to share everything, even if it gets ruined. Not getting any quiet or any cookies. That's not like my house, said Silver. Because of my disability, my family sometimes fall all over themselves for me. You're lucky, complained Jack. I wish it was that way at my houses. Well, it okay. can't. And smiled Reynolds. Just get sick or something. The raccoon was joking, of course. But Jack thought it was a good idea. Hmm. Do you? The next day, Hildegard went into Jack's room. Wake up, cuz, she said, and shaking him gently. It's time for breakfast. I can't get up, moaned Jack. I'm too cold. But it's summertime. It's already 80 degrees. Jack started shivering, helped by his foot, but that he tucked under his leg. Clever. Mr. Bunny, he pressed on Jack's stomach. And ow! It was like, like a stomach bug. Better stay in bed. We'll bring you some water. Where's that Harold? Thanks, smiled his brother. You don't know what this means to me. Me getting what I want, he finished under his breath. At first, Jack enjoyed himself. His brothers were quiet when he wanted to read. His sisters brought him water and crackers, and his cousins didn't stop hard arguments. They had to win. I should have thought of this a long time ago. <sighs> Jack sighed happily. They didn't last long. Mr. Bunny came in with an extra blanket. How are you feeling, Jackie? He asked. A little better, Papa. Son replied. I'm glad to hear it. Now, I've called Dr. Fox to come and take a look at you. You want to get better as soon as possible, right? Jack didn't answer. He knew the Dr. Fox Fox would know faking from a mile away. I'm in trouble, he thought. Oh, yes, you are. The doctor gave his patient a thorough examination, took some notes, and went to give Mr. Bunny his diagnosis. Jack listened and at the door, and as he thought, Dr. Fox hadn't been fooled. Papa hates it, and when I lie, he thought, I better check out of the hospital. Jack dressed quickly and climbed out the window. I'll come back later, and when they calm down, he said, they won't, won't be, be happy when they find out, and he made his way to the park. Running away is a very bad habit. It's even worse than lying. Reynolds was pushing Silver on the swing. The squirrel loved it. 
This is so much, he began. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what? Asked Parenolin. Unhappy Bunny at 12 o'clock. Jack was hiding in a hollow tree. This was where, where he'd go to be alone. Can we he come in? Asked Silver. The bunny nodded. Once they sat down, he explained what happened. That was a joke. Brown Reynolds. He just wanted a little attention, muttered Jack. Why did, did you ask? Ask for what you want. And explain. And why you wanted it in that way, suggested Silver. Mama and Papa wouldn't understand. And understand what? Papa, exclaimed Jack. How did your mother install find and seek ink on your phone? Oh, no. Or you ran off three times. I'm said Mr. Bunny. It's true. Jack's actually run, run away from from his mother's house more than his father's. I just haven't told you any of those stories yet. Now why did you pretend to be sick? The young bunny didn't reply. Jack didn't mean any harm, said Reynold. He just wanted you to pay attention to him. And added Silver. And to spend time only with you. Why did not you ask to spend time with me? Asked Mr. Bunny. I tried, replied Jack, but it didn't work. I'm sorry, son, apologized his father. I never meant to make you feel bad. From now on, I'll make time to spend and only with you. Oh, but promise to never faint in an illness again. Deal. Well, said Jack happily. Both father and son were true to their words. Jack told on his mother or how he felt as well. Also now both of his parents and me a quality time for him. Jack now knows how's the bit. Best way to get at what he wanted to ask nicely. He, and from, from that day to this, he's never said he was sick again. <laughs> Look at that. That pinball, or basketball, ski ball, having a ball. <laughs> Unless, of course, he was. Uh, get well soon, Jack. Well, well, I hope you like like today's story. And now I'm asking you to like, share, and subscribe. I please and thank you. And I hope hope you enjoy the next one, which is coming up up real soon. Till next time. Bye bye.